Hello again. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how we can insert data to our tables. If you remember from last tutorials, we learned how to connect to MySQL Server. We learned how to create a database. We learned how to select that database and then create and drop a table. Now, the table we created before is still there. And if you remember, the structure was like this. It was a table. We named it My Table, and we gave it one, two, three, four columns: student ID, which is auto increment; student first name, which is uh, a variable length for a variable length string uh, with a maximum number of characters 30 likewise for the last name and then date of birth of type date now to insert something into a table we need to do the usual the usual connection which is to uh, you know specify host name username password uh, and then connect using my using my sql connect to and check the connection is you know true or not whether it happened whether it happened or not and if it's successful we move on to selecting the database i'm using exactly the same sequence here i'm just hiding my root password because remember that when you whenever you want to do something with MySQL Server you need to you need to connect to it with the right user ie with a user that has the right uh, permission permissions or privileges to uh, uh, execute any process so for example whenever we want to create a table we need to uh, connect with the user who has pr privileges or, or, or permissions to create a table now we are inserting into tables so I'm actually connecting with my root pa uh, user but with my correct password now this is why I'm actually hiding it but I'm doing exactly the same thing as here if you can see uh, we can see actually now my SQL connect which is here anyway I'm sure that's clear now we connect successfully and then we uh, choose our database which is my DB which is, this is actually this actually is what we created in the previous videos and then uh, we select it and then we reach there hopefully the connection is successful and now to insert something into the table is the usual insert statement insert into and notice capital case because these are um, reserved words and then we give the table name and then we give a list of our column names uh, in, par in, in, in parentheses a, li a, a, a comma separated list to so see we give column one column two uh, you know the columns that we want to add data to and remember always remember that for something which is auto increment for a column which is auto increment we don't have to add it physically here it will be added automatically and for something which does not null we must add it otherwise it will cause an error so for example here for the date date of birth we can leave it empty but for L name or F name we must provide a string otherwise it will complain and the process will actually fail now uh, we provide a list of column names like that within within these uh, parentheses comma separated list and then we use the uh, keyword values and we provide a list of values again comma separated values of course every value should correspond to the correct column so the first value should correspond to the correct column and it must be of the same type so if that's a string this must be a string if it's an integer this must be an integer if it's a date it must be a date and so on and so forth now enough talking that's the uh, SQL statement that I'm, um, that I'm going to use here insert into my table which we created before student name student f name student l name and student date of birth notice I'm not using student ID because it's auto increment as we mentioned before and then we give I give a list of values let's say Sam Baker date of birth uh, this date of birth remember it's actually year, from left to right re, uh, year dash uh, month dash day now if you notice I'm using the backslashes here and the reason is is because Sam uh, the first name is a string if you remember from here it's a varchar, i.e. string. Last name is like is, is exactly the same, so that's why I'm putting it. I'm putting these two values in these quotation marks, and I'm using the backslash to tell my SQL that this is a string, and do not include the backslash in the value that you insert in the, into the table. Very important to understand why we use the backslash. Uh, I'll probably explain that in one of my upcoming videos. Anyway, to insert that, we just use this insert statement have another look quickly at it and then uh, remove this is because actually from previous videos I just co copy and paste and then we execute the query the usual way and then we say we just check whether data has been inserted or not uh, let me save that and then run it as you can see let me clear this stuff first clear my screen and then just execute insert I've actually created the file and gave it uh, execute permissions as usual run it and it tell me data has been successfully inserted into the table now we can actually insert more than this is inserting 
one row or one, or one record in the, into the table we can insert multiple rows at the same time and the way to do it is just to concatenate strings this way so that's one record and then we say comma another record exactly the same way comma separated list with strings within quotation marks with a backslash likewise the third row and the fourth row let me remove this row because we've added it already so if you notice here I'm sorry what am I doing now what we're doing here we are separating the values using comma and that's it so it's a comma separated value similar to when we provided column names and value names now these tuples or these or these rows that go or these values or these tuples that represent rows we can just separate them by commas and add multiple values at the same time enough talking let me save that and execute again now it's complaining why is that complaining unexpected these string let's have a look line 36 where's line 36 line 36 is here oh no let's have a second look oh yes because I actually accidentally removed the closing quotation from there I'm sorry oh, what am I doing let me just save this quickly and it's beautifully working very nicely as you can see and it has added those rows to that table now to check the data to check whether the data is actually in the table we need to use the select statement we learn how to do that in the coming videos thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time bye bye now